Hey guys, this is KidRob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign v4.0 Let's play with Superico Incorporated. Yes, and we are doing really well. well this was the uh, the first tick of the month there, but that is some revenue right there. And expenses are not too terrible, especially considering that uh, we are just paying taxes and no more no more loans. This is completely empty. So I think it is time to go big and take up some big loans because we need to expand. The current situation is as follows. We are on the very last uh, facelift of the Valerian. And that means that we very soon need to get out a new model. And that new model needs to be designed very soon. Um, probably right now. And just checking here on the research panel. Ah, oh, fuck me! I'm missing. I'm missing this already. I've only used it one, like once. But man, seeing the bodies that are coming out is so handy. <laughs> Don't need to start designing a car and then find out that there's no suitable body. But rather, you just go in here with the light campaign v4.1, uh, click there, and you have all the the, the bodies available. Uh, or rather, you see what's what's coming up and what's there. So uh, yeah, that is that is working very nicely. Um, not in this version though. So we are uh, yeah we are in a good unlock spot. Either we wait half a year or we build it now. So uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's pretty safe to say let's build it now. Also, there's really nothing in here which we really want. I mean, that is the next big thing for for Hans. That that would be. Hans Dieter is going to go nuts once this one comes out. Um, although the single f point fuel in injection is kind of a bit like a an, uh, a digital version of a four barrel carburetor. <laughs> it's not not much more advanced than that. Um, multi point is much more along his his liking. I think we are getting some familiarity in multi point because we are doing mechanical fuel injection. That is um, uh, one one of the familiarity avenues that I don't think many are exploring. But I think that's the case, because that's so similar. I mean, you're basically making a fuel map. Uh, well, in the analog world for, for the MFI, right? Um, and then here you just do it digitally. And the multipoint, well, that's kind of the same thing, right? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically MFI, but digitized. But what should be the plan for this one? Yeah, well, we would like to buy a new plot. We are just coming out of a recession, so that means the prices here are reasonably low at the moment. Uh, could, of course, be a lot better. We might want to build in Ahana, 47. Dalua is 46. Uh, ah, damn it. Um, Hedvesia is not, a, <laughs> not in contention, really. Edvisia is the the most expensive there, both 60% plot costs. Alright, mm, Ahana, it's not that much cheaper. Do we really want to build shit quality cars like this? As our build quality will suffer, but it's so much cheaper with the labor going on there. Uh, if we want to build a large factory at some point, we probably, uh, in the late game at least, we do want to be in Ahana, because that makes you super competitive. Oh, the market in Farinia is through the roof. That is the most expensive. Holy moly. Okay, yeah, we're definitely not going to be in Farinia anytime soon. Uh, yeah, that's that's a big bye-bye. Uh, okay. Uh, 47. Yeah, I, I think that's where we are going. Oh, Delua. Uh, yeah, we could build from Delua as well. 46, even cheaper. That would be a little different, but they do have higher, they do have some higher labor costs there. So, um, hmm, I don't know, I don't know. Let's let's check it out first. Um, what we even want to do, because we are currently sitting at a medium two factory, for both engine and car. So we could upgrade that. That's quite expensive. Could upgrade that for the next car. That would mean that there's a pretty large break in production though. Uh, we 
maybe don't want that, but rather go big right now and buy large plots and then put a medium one on that uh, and produce out of that an additional additional car and then we can design another one which then goes into the medium two without a revamp so we um, basically get two sets of factories I think that could work out Although we might not we, we might be able to cheap out actually and just reuse the engine so but that would mean that we need to upgrade the engine factory because it certainly can't deal with uh, with the big demand from a medium three and a uh, a large or a medium one because we start well with that well built on a large plot okay anyway uh, let's let's start designing something we need some replacement for our our fuel efficient uh, city slash commuter um, segment so let's design that first oh yeah and that's quite nice we do have available some 74 unlocks those are pretty good those are pretty good five door wagon right there uh, do we have a four door sedan um the, oh and we do have a little van could go into that too light delivery yeah that will be a pretty strong entry i believe oh no oh no this is terrible hans dieter will crucify us uh look at that now uh, we have basically a good choice between the 71 and the 74 and both same wheelbase oh that's fine and both have a kind of vanny um, or utility slash delivery uh, functionality in their body lineup um there we have four doors here all the two seat rows so there's no difference there but like half the cabin space of this one well, not quite as bad as that but uh this is a four door but look at this this one down here has a drag coefficient of 0.34, so very low, uh, for, well, very low in air quotes, but <laughs> still. Um, and this one is abysmal. 0.40, terrible. Um, so that's not great for fuel economy, is it? But its stats are just so much better. I think I'm going to bite that eco bullet and go with a very draggy version. Ouch. Yeah, it's more modern too. Another three years on top. Okay, let's choose this one. It's just better cargo stats on this. All right. So what do we have? And, yeah, I mean, why why is this one so draggy? Almost looks a little modern. Uh, we are going for, of course, steel, because fiberglass. Uh, we need SMC injectors. Do we even have that? Av yeah, you should have that available in the 70s, probably. Or is that coming a little later on? Oh yeah, we are going steel here. We we don't want to have any uh, any additional difficulty in building this now. Uh, and monocoque it is. 18.6% familiarity already. Let's switch on the familiarity there. Oh, 14% there. Nice. Um, longitudinal, of course. Although, it might be time to go for the front transverse, really. If the engines fit that would probably be a good move because it makes the car lighter and a little bit more drivable too with the front wheel drive so maybe this is the time to switch we do have a plus two so if we go just just cut at the corner a little bit with a minus one here in chassis i think we're fine especially we're, because we're going yeah that cuts off three months there as you see and this one would be uh, well, it doesn't include the familiarity there, but that's 23% off that price. Oh, man, that's big. That is big. So tw another 23% off the 27. Yeah, okay. That is a big difference. If we choose front longitudinal, that reduces the engineering time here to just 20 months and a little bit. Um, otherwise, it's 27. I didn't expect this to be such a hard decision. Let's uh, move on with the lower engineering time for now because of opportunity costs and so on. Um, and then, of course, we are going to replace the existing variant of our super modern engine. 
Ah, uh, what the fuck? Why are you bothering me again about this? This is already the perfect engine. I can't make it any better. Come on. Uh, look, I can't even improve the compression ratio anymore. We have not advanced. This shit company has not advanced its technology. So, we, we just can't do anything. Uh, there is mechanical fuel injection. Now it's 16.8% familiarity. Took you guys long enough to learn this thing. And now this is all good. Um, of course, this is perfect. I would go down to 20 to 1, but you won't let me. Stupid game. So we can up the quality a bit more just to get some more, uh, some, some more reliability as well. I upped it more there just to see what's going on, but we were at plus 2 and now plus 3. That's, that's a decent improvement. And what are we going to do here? I, I don't know. No, we don't want catalytic converters because they make the efficiency just shit. And that is not what we want. Uh, up the exhaust? No, no, no. That's a bad, bad thing to do. So I think we are good here. Uh, we could increase the quality further. Because that makes, makes me happy with the fuel efficiency. Although we are not really getting anywhere with this. Uh, also... Where, where's our run? The octane is at 90.7. So we could try to up this. And there you go. We have improved the fuel efficiency by another tick. Almost 21%. That's beautiful. So if we compare it to the, the previous engine, uh, which we have here, we, we see I've even given you loads of more power. Now we make 57.1 instead of 56.2 horsepower. So almost a full horse extra in the car. Let's hope it's not in the back seat because that's bad for fuel economy. As always, Hans was very, Hans, Hans Dieter was very enlightening um, and happy about everything. So uh, we are going with the sedan here. It's unfortunate that we only have two doors in this one. We could also, we could make a hatchback version actually, because that is what the commuters want, isn't it? So maybe we make our first proper commuter car. That would be interesting. So a wagon version and a commuter version. So just setting it up so that second gear goes to 100. And then we have an economy gear on top of that. We should have a top speed of roughly 150 kilometers now. And I think we are going to switch to Alloy rims, yeah, because it's so much lighter. Um, the engineering time really doesn't matter too much here, and the material cost I think we can take. Yeah, it, it ups the comfort as well. And it ups the comfort slightly, because the the lighter uh, the, um, the wheels are, uh, the unsprung mass is, uh, the, the better. Do we want to make the jump into solid disk? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure if we need to. Let's stay with the drums a little bit longer. But we were saying that we are from now on always going to do semi-clad. And I think that's reasonable. Let's up the cooling, airflow a little. 70, yeah, 75, we do want the reliability bonus we get. Standard, of course. And we still have standard radio available. That is, of course, dirt cheap. Standard 8-track is not so standard just yet. A Whoa, that's expensive. Uh, and we can probably put a little bit of quality into this already. Five seats? Mm, yeah, we do want it to be compatible to the family segment. Standard 60s. Yeah, let's build the first version of the car with standard 60s. Should be good. And then progressive springs, of course, gas mono, and here we have our build, which of course still is awful because of that. Um, how about we go for normal? And there we are. Okay, much better. They do want a sedan. Okay. Okay, I thought they were into hatchbacks. Um, these guys are into hatchbacks, though. The city, city cars. And there's some more tuning to do before we can really tell what they like about it or if they like it or not. Uh, especially the wheels. Let's drop that down. This is getting closer. 125s. Holy shit, that's tiny. Uh, let's make it a little larger. 
that is looking pretty good as a starting point. Now we just need to fine tune it. Yeah, not too bad of performance. 54 drivability almost. That's some good going. All right, prestige is uh, is not too terrible. Uh, Practicality is up there. So yeah, this is a city trim really. Commuter not so much because of the body penalty. They do want their sedans. Uh, let's uh, target city instead. Ah, okay, braking isn't even optimized just yet, so uh, we should get another few points in here. Uh, it's just about the ratio, really. Yeah, definitely no need for solid discs here. We have basically no brake fade whatsoever. 44.8 uh, meters, brilliant stopping distance. Is this looking good? I believe it is, considering that we are going to be more efficient at production than this. I think the affordability ratings are a little low here. On the other hand, we're going to require massive markups. Uh, yeah, I'm currently in the process of redesigning the um, a, um, dealerships and how all that sales stuff works. Uh, although the the sales calculations have been implemented already uh, since they they had been designed like five years ago or whatever that was um, back back in the day by myself as well. So that is in and working. But the fun part about this is that you won't get any margins anymore <laughs> basically that's you you decide your fixed price and that is what you get from the dealers and then they put a margin on top uh, which you don't see of course and uh, their margin or their happiness depends on how much margin they can get but they are in competition to each other so their margins don't rise to ridiculous levels and yeah, it makes the game a lot more stable in the calculations, which means that in the forecaster screen you actually get useful data now, which uh, you can use to forecast stuff instead of just guess. Oh, and what that also means is that you no longer pay uh, dealership prices because they're independent. So that that is a bonus. So while you don't get massive margins, you don't have to sink massive amounts of money into them either. Oh yes, oh yes, let's go with the kakapo. <laughs> uh, that's a, a New Zealand bird. So, um, okay, that's that's beautiful, and we shall call you the H71 Mark One, and that's for hatchback, of course. So let's make a wagon version and see if we can cater to the family segment. Also, maybe we do want to go for a four-seater here. Let's check if that is better. And that's an interesting consideration because that sets them apart further so that they don't compete against each other as much. Cater to uh, different audiences that way. Let's see what happens if we do that. Okay. So comfort goes up, drivability basically no change. Um, safety goes up. That's good things, good things. Commuter likes it, four to five, two to five, of course. So they, these, these guys are all happy with this. So I think we're going with four. Also makes the car cheaper. Yeah, that's looking neat. I like it. We're in a good range for the affordability, considering that this is going to be built in a massive factory. So let's, uh, massive in air quotes, I guess, but uh, still, it's pretty large for its time. Uh, yeah, that's looking good. So now build the wagon. Uh, which one do we take? The five door, of course, because it is supposed to be um, super practical oh yeah looking cool as well so let's activate the morph and no nope, wrong morph where's the the whole thing morph I want to have all the space ah give me all the space now I can't get all the space then we need to keep it small and we can go with hard long life tires in this instance I believe uh, we need to retune then but that's fine keeping it cheap keeping it five seat that should all be good and again, we have decent acceleration up to 120 kilometers now. What is this magic? Can't really get it to optimal with these tires. And well, I think I'm going to leave it at this. It's good enough. So, uh, yeah, re-optimize it slightly higher ride height for extra load capacity and so on. Slightly stiffer. And it's looking good. It does look good. And it's not colliding too much with uh, our other uh, our other trim. So that's a bonus. So now comes the new wild thing. We are going to make a light delivery. 
Let's see, do we have any interesting morphs for this one? Don't think we do. No, they are the same as for the wagon. But uh, we can always make the cargo area a little larger. Let's do that. And put that in. Make it lighter. All right, that, I think this is about where we want to have it. Um, let's see how good this thing is. It does have plenty of cargo space. Oh, yeah. Light delivery loves it. Okay, there we go. Uh, now just optimize and see where it leads us. Optimizing the brake slightly, giving extra capacity for slightly higher utility. Uh, although I had to tune them down regardless. This is all still looking good. Interior. Uh, do we want to go with none here? That will probably make them super happy. They're not that into comfort, are they? 7% here. Yeah. Basic radio. But we are... This is so dirt cheap. They can have that. Yeah. Yeah, that is certainly not overlapping with our other uh, demographics, apart from city economy. But now the factory question. Ouch. Okay, how are we going to do this? Whew, okay. So, level 3. Uh, that already is 530 million. And we probably do want to put that on top while we're at it. Oh, how much does that add here? Just two months. So that's fine. Um, that's all good. We are going to produce all those three trims in there. Full refresh, of course. High automation level. This is looking fantastic. Worker wages. Oh, this is 16 bucks only. Whew. Nice. That is very good. Uh, build quality is through the roof. That is great stuff. Uh, for year five, not so great anymore, but that's fine. Let me update the name so that I instantly can see what size it is, even outside of this menu. Uh, so it's the Car Factory M3. Uh, so medium three. That is looking good for pricing. Th that is also not looking terrible. Below 60 months, we are getting... Well, that's the most exp um, uh, expensive thing here in time of course but we are at minus one there should we try to get a minus two although no no not necessarily probably you do want to have the tooling where it is funding can we put up the funding probably so let's see we are making like roughly 30 million in profits per month on this one once it's out so that means that we could easily... Uh, let's see how many months we chop off. Yeah, I think about here is, is, seems right. Uh, 56, so that doesn't up it too much. That's an additional two months worth of uh, production for about half our profits. Sounds like a good deal. With how complex the engine is, uh, we, we can't use it for anything else anyway. So why not move to a level 3 factory here as well because otherwise we are yeah we are a little low on engines this is also looking fine just 11.5 dollars uh 11.50 per production unit very good 7200 engines and engineering time is hans magic uh because it's nothing so reliability now finally can be cranked up like crazy 56 is what we are aiming for of course not necessarily but uh, yeah we, it needs a selling point after all it does need a selling point this engine apart from its economy and preferably that would be reliability okay this is perfect making it so much cheaper as well oh this is such a good project <laughs> uh, re-engineer everything and you get so much out of it 60 50, 75, 41 there, and 15 under pressure. Yes, 19% bonus reliability. That makes up for the fact that this is way over -teched. That probably is now at least on par with the other modern engines. Uh, modern, for the 70s. Yeah, and that is a lot more healthy, for sure. 1.3... Uh, per engine instead of 1.5. I believe it has come down from 1.5. Ah, oh, the forecaster doesn't look all too healthy. Not quite sure why that is. 
maybe um uh, maybe we are currently oh yeah we are trending down in the economy i believe so if we say that that one is doing well does it offset that let's see no it makes it even worse <laughs> okay um then maybe not these numbers don't look good why would that be the case though hmm maybe it's just not competitive enough as in the stats not high enough but let's let me just check what the current stats are for these cars and of course we can do that from here we just check out for instance uh, city so they are at 50 ooh, 52 drivability 20 no 10 com <laughs> 10 comfort oh yeah that's not too great is it uh, safety pretty high. Yeah, we're losing out on safety a bit. Mm, our fuel economy of 7.5 liters per 100k will be pretty good. I believe it was at 7.5. 7.7 for the sedan version. Was it sedan? No, it was a hatchback version. 7.7. Uh, .7. What is that for the Americans? Alright, that's 30.5 miles to a gallon. So, quite good, especially for a car in the 70s. Very high-tech car in the 70s. With the engine, at least. It has Han Hans Dieter written all over it. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, we do have the tooling costs in here. I think we want to take them out. That makes the pricing a little awkward. Um, yeah, still not great. But 7K, you can't, really can't make it any cheaper than this. And we are selling into a large enough market. Now everything is available. So this should work. This should work. <laughs> Famous last words. 5,500 cars per month. Ooh, and there we go. That is 1.6 billion. No, the Hans Mobile is not going to get signed off. Still not. Uh, the Kakapo and the engine with both factory upgrades. That is big. Can barely take out that much. Do we want to have it spread out again? Or do we want to pay it off in 36 months? That is quite a difference. But, uh, yeah. That we can't really pay off uh, 1.8 billion within just 36 months, can we? So let's, um, let's go with 100. That's our big loan for now. And see how it goes. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Here we have it. Sign off. So the problem here is... Holy shit, 36 months. Uh, we've set it to 36 months. Uh, these, of course, don't need quite as much. But we do need to have some stock available for this, at least to get through halfway. Let's hope that happens. Uh, all right, I think we, um, we stop here for now. This is scary. We need to design another car, I guess. Or No, we don't have the money for it. We just don't have the money. With that loan, we were already at capacity we weren't able to take out all the uh, the money we needed for this just 99 <laughs> percent that tells you that you are right on the line so uh yeah i think we leave it at that and i hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time